Now we're going to talk about getting charged. And by that I mean acquiring some charge. So objects are usually neutral. And by that I mean if I just draw a couple of general objects here, I'll just make them squares, call them square A and square B. If those squares are made of matter, and the matter is a bunch of atoms, and all those atoms are neutral, remember the atom had the same number of protons and electrons, so the atom's total charge was zero, what we call neutral. Well, if all the atoms that make it up are neutral, then the whole thing is neutral. We could just add all those billions of billions of, uh, of atoms and protons and electrons. So these things, we would say, are neutral because we have a balance of the P, the proton, and the electron all the way from the microscopic to the macroscopic scale. So usually something sitting around is pretty much neutral. Maybe there's one extra electron. Um, but if you rub them together, you can transfer electrons. And it's the electrons because they're the loosely bound things that are just flying around. It doesn't, not that hard to knock some of those off. So then the process would be, if we wanted to write this kind of like a bad chemical reaction here, you rub, and what's going to happen is you're going to uh, transfer E from A to B. Okay? So when you're done, it would look like this. We would have uh, mass A here and mass B here. We rubbed them together. It transferred from A to B. So what's going to happen is these atoms that were neutral now have a few extra electrons. They're just kind of sitting on the surface. So often we'll draw something like this. We'll draw a bunch of negative signs along the surface. Basically that's telling you this is negatively charged now. The charge doesn't kind of go into the material. It just stays right on the surface because it was put on by rubbing. Now if electrons came off of this material and went over this material, now there's some electrons missing here. There's some atoms that have more protons and electrons right at the surface. So it leaves this charge, or this surface, a little bit positively charged. So this is the simple way that you can charge something up. Now, not every two objects will do this. You can imagine if you rub two identical objects together, what defines which way the electrons go? You have to do rub two different objects together. And different materials transfer electrons, uh, some better than others. Some are really efficient, some don't really transfer electrons at all when you rub them. So some of the best materials for this, uh, one of them is Teflon. So this is a big Teflon rod. So this is really good for receiving electrons because it's made with a lot of fluorine in it and fluorine is very electronegative. It likes to grab electrons. So if you rub Teflon with something, loves to get electrons. Something that loves to give up electrons is fur. So rabbit always seems to be the best, so we got rabbit fur because only the best here at Rice. So if I rub rabbit fur and Teflon, I should be transferring charge and I should be transferring electrons from the fur, in this case A, to the Teflon, in this case B. And it is really happening, but you can't see them, right? These are microscopic quantities of charge. I can't see the charge. So the one way I can show you the charge is to jump ahead and start talking about what charge does. So it's a property of matter, but we care about it because it creates force. Charges push on each other. And they push on each other in a way that's easy to remember because Paula Abdul sang a song about it and made a video about it in the 80s. And it's called Opposites Attract. And if you can find this video and watch it, and if you can get through the whole thing, I'm very impressed. I've never made it past about the 30 second mark. It's a little bit hard to watch these days, didn't age well. Uh, but anyway, the song is called Opposites Attract and it is true that positive and negative charge feel an attractive force towards each other and like charges repel. So if you have negatives and negatives, they repel each other. So I can show you this. You can't really see the forces here, but if we come over here, I've got a piece of Teflon tape. So that's a much lighter piece of Teflon. So if there's a force, the Teflon tape is going to move. Okay? So first, will show that opposites attract. I will charge up the Teflon and the fur. I'll rub the fur against the Teflon like this. And now I'm charging up the Teflon tape. So now the Teflon tape is negative, the fur is positive, 
and we should see an attractive force. See, there it is. The fur, or I'm sorry, the tape is attracted to the fur. Opposite charges attract. It's a little hard to see because it's hard to get fur to really charge up. Fur loses its charge pretty easily. And then I talk and I blow it. There you can see the attractive force. The repulsive force is a lot easier to see because Teflon really holds its charge. So I just made the Teflon negative by rubbing it with fur. I'll make this Teflon rod negative by rubbing it with fur. And then if I try to make them touch, there's just no way they're going to touch. Okay. Huge repulsive force between the like charges. Negative and negative, they don't want to touch each other. So we didn't create any charge here. All we did was transfer charge. By rubbing, you can move charge from one place to another, and then you can immediately see the effects through the forces where opposites attract and like charges repel.